This week on The Wire, city rents rise as vacancies fall, big shortfall of dwellings looms, and record loans go into self-managed super fund property. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest and welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate. You can get all the top stories happening this week in real estate, finance and investment and more. Kicking it off with our top story for this week, city rents rise as vacancies fall. So capital city rents continue to rise as vacancy rates fall further throughout Australia. And SQM Research Managing Director Louis Christopher says vacancy rates in the smaller capital cities are below 1% and around 2% in Sydney and Melbourne. Vacancies are under 1% in most regional markets. Now capital city average asking rents have increased to $627 a week for houses and $447 a week for units. And this follows significant decreases in vacancy rates in all cities in the past month and over the past year. Now, Christopher's analysis found that Perth, Brisbane and Canberra had the largest increase in asking rents for houses during the four-week period. The latest increases mean asking rents have increased by 14% in the past 12 months for houses and by 8.5% for units. Now, Christopher says, given a dramatic tightening in vacancy rates, we are seeing an ongoing acceleration in weekly market rents across the capital cities. And we can expect capital city rents to rise by over 10% in 2022, he says. And now to our next big story. Big shortfall of dwellings looms. So Australia is forecast to have a shortage of dwellings by 2032 of more than 160,000. And Mervac Chief Executive Susan Lloyd Hurwitz and Borrell CEO Zlatko to Tador Zevsky have told a National Housing Finance and Investment Corporation panel the shortfall is a result of an increase in single-person households and the return of migration-driven population growth. Now, Lloyd Hurwitz says, adding to the issue, is that planning regulations around the country are convoluted and complicated, particularly in New South Wales. She said, we have migration turning on at the same time as we're going to have an undersupply of housing. So that takes us right back again to the supply issue and the need urgently to get more supply into the market. Now, the National Housing Finance and Investment Corporation's State of the Nation's Housing Report for 21-22 predicts the number of single-person households will rise from 25% 2016 to 27.5% by 2032. And Lloyd Hurwitz and Todorosevsky say that this means unit developments will be an increasingly important part of Australia's housing picture. And now for our final story of the week, record loans go into self-managed super fund property. So the value of property bought by self-managed superannuation funds increased by 22% in the past year to a record $140 billion. Borrowing by self-managed superannuation funds to buy residential and commercial properties also increased 22% during the same period. That's according to Australian tax office figures. Now, Tracy Scott Brook uh, of the SMSF Association says in 2021, the biggest increase in property investment was by company owners purchasing their offices, warehouses or factories and leasing the premises back from the SMSF. Now, the ATO figures show about $91 billion was invested in non-residential property. Tax specialist Mark Chapman of H&R Block says there are strict rules for buying a property in an investment fund. He said tenants are still required to pay a market rent and while it might be a worthwhile investment for a business owner, they still need to consider if it was a good investment for their superannuation. He says owners need to take into account the yield and expected growth. Well guys, they're the top stories happening this week. Now please don't forget to like, comment and share this video and follow or subscribe wherever you are seeing this. Have a great week and remember guys, there is only one thing in life that makes a difference. That's action. Thanks a lot and bye for now. Thanks.